Ja, men nu åker vi här nu. Headset on. Jag står för här nu igen. We are in northern Sweden flying over the southern edge of the Arctic tundra and about to get dropped off in what feels like a vast, beautiful nowhere. The land up here is both breathtaking and harsh. Try to predict the weather and you will likely fail. A hard realization for a camera person like me. Yes, yeah, snow. It's a rainy day today. I'm here with my friend and researcher Mats Björkman and his team in the search for permafrost. The thing is, I said this was the Arctic tundra, but one of the unique characteristics of this biome is a more or less permanently frozen ground called the permafrost. Only the top layer of the soil, the active layer, thaws in the summer. Or at least that's how it used to be. Okay, start measuring. Yes. So what is intriguing about this area is that we know that there was permafrost here about 15 years ago. Now it is gone. These guys are trying to find out the effects on the environment after the permafrost has disappeared. Right. The interesting thing with permafrost, I think, or why we investigate it today, is the response of permafrost to climate change. So with the uh, increase in temperature, we also start to thaw the permafrost and we actually lose permafrost in, in quite a few areas. This means that the huge carbon stock that's in there that has been frozen or built up for, for millennia start to be accessible for the bacteria that's here and eventually it will get consumed and be uh, converted to methane or carbon dioxide in the future. So part of the problem is that permafrosts are disappearing as a result of increasing global temperatures. The other part is that permafrosts are believed to hold about 50% of Earth's underground carbon pool. This is old organic material that may have been trapped in this frozen environment for thousands of years. Nice! Oh, you picked up a rock. That's why you stuck. That's yeah. like a plug. <laughs> what happens when permafrosts thaw is kind of like what happens to an old freezer that was accidentally left open. A potential feast for microorganisms that converts the old carbon into carbon dioxide and methane and essentially contributing to speeding up the process that started it all. How all this will affect the life up here is the big question. Up here in the alpine tundra you won't find any big trees, you won't find hardly any bushes either, but all the plants that grow up here are going to be low growing, close to the ground. One of the interesting species that is being tested up here is this little guy. This is Salix polaris, meaning that it's a member of the willow family. Normally we're, we're used to seeing willows as big trees, but these guys only stick up, you know, about that much. But they have a, a pretty extensive root system that goes down into the, uh, the surrounding soil here. And what is cool is that these woody roots can actually be dated just like we date trees when we look at the tree rings. The interesting thing is that these plants can be 50 years old or more. And the oldest part is somewhere around here, which is the main stem meaning that they would have been here when the permafrost was still present. By looking at the annual rings of the roots, Christopher is searching for a change in the pattern, indicating a time with unusual growth. And if I can find this increased growth, I will be able to see within a few years when the permafrost actually disappeared in this area. A first important step in figuring out when things started to change. Preparing for some soil sampling. It's almost better than before. Yeah. Our team is also collecting soil samples from the old permafrost soil and measuring the amount of carbon dioxide and methane coming out of the ground. I'll need to get this one started. All in an effort to try and find some clues that will help us understand the changes that this environment is going through. And it's not like the organisms up here have an easy life to begin with. The coffee pot. Without that, no one works. This is unfortunately not going to be a story where everything gets fixed in the end. The truth is that disappearing permafrost is becoming a problem in polar regions all over the world. We know that increasing global temperature is behind it. And what happens up here actually has more of an impact on our lives than we might think. As the permafrost continue to thaw, more of the carbon stock they contain is released and ultimately affecting the global climate even more. The question is then, is this such a bad thing? I know many times I wish that temperatures would go up and summer would last longer, 
the problem is that it's just not that simple. We're not in control of how the climate changes affect us. We can't choose the result. But we do know that the Arctic region is getting hit hard. The species that live up here are adapted to the harsh tundra conditions and are very sensitive to change. They're not strong competitors and new species can come in and take over. For many of the organisms that live in the Arctic, this is now a fight for survival. At our southernmost test site, this is very clear. The permafrost here is thought to have disappeared between 50 to 100 years ago, and now the landscape looks different, with tall shrubs and different species. Research like this is helping us understand both our role in this, and also what we can do to help these beautiful wild places remain. I want to give a big thank you to everyone who was involved in this project. If you liked the video, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. We have a lot more videos coming out. Also, if you have a project that you think we could collaborate on, feel free to let us know.